Hi, Gene Bosler, Houston, Texas. Today I want to talk briefly about ball moss. It is a Texas thing you might not understand. This is it. Tillandsia recurvata is the botanical name of this epiphyte. It is related to Spanish moss and like the bromeliad or the orchid or the pineapple it derives its nutrient needs from the air and its rooting structures are, are just so it can have a place to hold on and it resides in the tree a good example is this post oak behind me so I thought I was done talking about uh, ball moss when I moved to Houston from San Antonio in the Texas Hill Country where it's uh, very heavy. But there's places like Sugar Land and west of Memorial and Katy where there's a lot of ball moss. So this is a post oak and if you've never been to San Antonio, allow me to assure you that this is a very light ball moss population in this tree. This is not heavy at all. You can see that this post oak is in full spring mode. It's popping out its flowers and male catkins all over uh, in foliage. So here's the ball moss in the tree. Everybody says the ball moss harms the tree. Ball moss is a parasite. It's obviously the tree is in stress. It's got all this ball moss on it. The tree's doing poorly. Therefore, it must be the ball moss's fault that the tree is doing poorly. The question here is which came first, the chicken or the egg? And uh, ball moss is kind of one of those neutral things. Uh, it is heavy on trees that are distressed. But it isn't necessarily the cause of the distress. The post oak is a notoriously sensitive species. They tend to be indicative of poor soils. They tend not to like a lot of root disturbance in their root protection zones, in their root zones. They don't like things like driveways and turf grass and irrigation systems. And the fact that there are any at all residing in the urban suburban landscape setting is testament to what a what a wonderful species this is. So here's the big problem that arises when people get too focused on ball moss. They'll get up in there and they, the tree guy will promise up and down, swear up and down, in writing, contractually agreed, I'm only removing dead wood and ball moss and nothing else. But the simple fact is that the actual end result is far different from what was promised. It is virtually impossible to pick a tree clean of ball moss without removing a little branch here and a little branch there and this one had nine pieces on it so I pruned the whole branch and I couldn't get to this one so I took the whole branch and I got this one and I picked the ball moss clean and in the process I, I got all of these little branches here well they were in my way and I had to get out to the end of the limb and so I just got them on my way and before you're done, 70, 80, I've even seen 90% of the leaf population removed from the tree. Now let's remember why trees have leaves. Leaves photosynthesize. They use the sun to create food. So we kind of get it backwards in our head when we fertilize we think we're feeding the trees right they all call it plant food there's no such thing right 
photosynthesis is how plants eat. They create food. And so when you remove 70, 80, 90 percent of the leaf population from a tree, you are removing its food factory. All for the sake of this ball moss whose harm to the tree is questionable at best. So at the very worst I would say that ball moss needs to reside way down at the bottom of the list of problems that this tree has. I say let's talk about the, the stress caused by constant irrigation and poor internal drainage in the soil. Let's talk about soil moisture. Let's talk about turf grass competition. Let's talk about Let's talk about the aphids and the powdery mildew and the uh, leaf diseases and the... She called me. Thank you. And uh, the mites, spider mites and all of the other problems, uh, mealy bugs. Why do you think a post oak gets it? It's more susceptible because of all the stress. In fact, it might be more susceptible than a similar species dealing with the same stress factors. So, let's talk about this. Here's the soil. Inch or so of decent soil. Half of a grub, sorry. And then clay. The good news is that it's not compacted. Or it's not saturated. It is compacted but it's not saturated, which is, which is uh, super important. Um, so it's clay nonetheless. As you can see, I can mold it. Right, this is, a, this is a pretty heavy clay. It's compacted, it's anaerobic. You don't see any roots here at all, and I'm only five feet away from the trunk. This is, this is, um, this is part of the problem. So I'm not saying that this tree is in major distress, but I am saying let's take some steps to improve its soil nutrition, improve its soil, um, uh, maybe maybe reduce the amount of turf grass competition by installing a bed. But let's not um, remove vast percentages of its leaf making capacity just to get rid of some ball moss it, it, whose harm to the tree is negligible at best. So I do sometimes spray the ball moss with a uh, baking soda formulation and some uh, copper fungicide. There's, that stuff works to help reduce ball moss. It works best if you do it three years in a row. It has to be done in the winter when it's cold and um, it has to be, you know, preferably it's drizzly at the time. We can talk about that if you ask me, you know, feel free to call me and ask me questions. And the last thing I want to say about ball moss, I'm talking fast because my battery's dying. Fancy brand new battery, doesn't take a charge. This is the um, Averio HDD hard disk camcorder by JVC. Uh, the last thing I want to say about ball moss is that it is very high in nitrogen. It's considered a nitrogen fixer. So uh, run over it with your lawnmower and leave it lie in the grass. But uh, certainly no need to haul it off. Very nice tree. Beautiful spring day. Coming out with spring foliage. And uh, it's too late to do anything about this ball moss. Even if I would recommend it. This is a super light population ball mosses. If, you're from, if you're anybody's from San Antonio or lives in the Texas Hill Country or Austin, Austin, Texas, you know what heavy ball moss is and this ain't it. So if she'd like, we'll come around next January, next time it's cold, and we'll hit it with baking soda. But we'll make it clear to the customer that it's got to be a minimum of three years in a row if she really wants it to work. And even then, get the tree healthy. I think it's a poor use of limited tree dollars. The same dollars could be spent to fertilize this tree. Put in some boost natural. Soil injected into the ground. 100% organic boost natural. 
why, uh, you know, why not, why not strike the root here, so to speak, and and uh, and spend your limited dollars on on a on a more worthy pursuit than the, the eradication of the, the the futile attempt to eradicate the ball moss from a tree. I welcome your comments. Thank you. And I, oh, by the way, I will go ahead and go to my Picasso web album and I'll post some pictures of some trees that have been completely, almost completely defoliated, all for the sake of removing ball moss. One case of a tree that actually died because it had so much foliage removed from it in this ball moss, or what, we, what, they, what they call demossing operation. It's a total ripoff. Uh, info at wideworldoftrees.com. Uh, I welcome your comments, disagreement. You think I'm full of baloney? Uh, let's talk about Talanzia recurvata, the ball moss, and uh, how it should be managed, if at all, and what things we should really be focusing on, like soil nutrition, if we're worried about our trees. Thanks for tuning in.